welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. So, probably more. Primo. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Should we be going tonight? Hey man, side note, bro. Yeah, go you you got a kid. You seen that movie Encanto? Mm-hmm. What the fuck happened at the end? What you mean? At the end, at the, end of the, movie, at the movie Encanto. Oh, uh... I, I left off at the movie, and when she found the uncle, he had another vision of uh, of her. Then her and the grandma got to arguing, and oh, then I ain't seen no more happened. the movie. All of that shit kind of happened, but then uh, kind of find out it was like uh, the little girl was right. The grandma had like had something to do with the shit, so she ended up getting the whole family back together, and they all used their power to save the uh, the the crib or whatever. And then they came back together. Bruno was now part of the family again, mm-hmm. uh, and then they were singing and shit, but. Like did, the house, did she like, the house the broke the fuck all apart and had basically like disappeared. Then the little girl had to like go on a journey, not a journey, but she had to like go through the family and like kind of make things right and help everybody to like basically mend all of their little like disagreements and resentments. And then once mm-hmm. she did that, they was able to like bring their power together and the house came back and it, it had a bigger and better crib. And now they had like opened it up to people. People was coming in there and they was like all doing little services for the people again. But, yeah. Okay, okay. But cool we man. don't talk like about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. What My kids saying that shit. I was like, who the fuck is Bruno? <laughs> great movie. No, we don't talk about him. Some of the best. Like, Daddy, you gotta movies, watch it. Some of the best kid movies have come out. In like the past couple of years since this pandemic period, like oh god, it's been some great television and movies coming out for kids. <clears throat> like I probably watch more kids shows and movies than I have grown ups, and they've been great, just great fucking shows. And movies. I, I don't know if we mentioned before, but we would talk. I, I don't know if we mentioned before, but now we talking about cartoons and shit and animation. Have you I've seen that shit on Netflix? Love, Sex, and Robots, or Love, Death, and Robots, whatever it's called. Yes, I have, and I love it. Yeah, me and Pooh watch Yes, it. I fuck with that shit, yo. I fuck with that shit, yo. I binged that shit the other day. I fuck with almost every one of them shits. They like short, you get into the shits, and boom. Like, oh, shit, I like that shit. Not an anthology, but. It's like those. Um, I mean, like Twilight Zone. It's like a bunch of non-connected shit. Uh-huh. It's about the same overarching theme, but it's like a different concept each shit. But they cool. Yeah, I, like, um, I like the yeah. thought of having a different artist do each one too. I thought that was cool. So it's like that movie Heavy Metal from 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. It's like them old MTV oddities. Mm-hmm. The MTV oddities show where they. Show like oh, different yeah. crazy shit. Eon Flux. Eon oh, Flux. Yeah. That that hour. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got that feel. That shit. Yo, them shits had me like, yo, what the fuck? I fuck with them shits hard, yo. They need to come out with some more of them shits. Yeah, they do. Tell you what else they need to come out with them more of, man. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to the partner. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. <coughs> Excuse me. A little under the weather with allergies this week, but still here. As always, I'm one third of the partners. This is your boy, Tears, and I'm along with. It's your friendly neighborhood, Padawan, here, and I am along with. What's that, man? It's your final piece, face. In the place. Indeed. And we are back together again like Voltron. How y'all be this week? How's everybody doing? I can't complain. A bit overwhelmed. Can't, can't yeah. A bit overwhelmed. A bit overwhelmed. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? 
overwhelmed by work. What do you need? Uh, man, just starting a week. I got a lot of stuff. Um, I know I told y'all in a chat earlier or whatever, but I have a checklist of stuff that I need to do for work or whatever so I can go through this mentorship to see if they can position me in a better place. So there's that and just everything else in between that I need to complete out this week or whatever. And I still got to do a lot of editing done um, pretty much. But yeah, and then I got hit with some... Seemed like I got hit with a little stomach virus or something this weekend or something. That's that's me to all the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the shit, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Man, it, it, fucking told itself all on the East Coast, huh? Oh, doing all right. And then it's like, <laughs> it's like, wait, like two, plop, three, plop, like plop, three, plop, 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 plop. three thirty or whatever. I was like, oh, what the fuck? And then it came back at six. Now I went to sleep. And I woke up at 10. And Almost next thing you know, when I woke up at 10, good night, nerd. Almost shit on yourself. The world went crazy. <laughs> the slap, the slap heard around the world happened. I was like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. I take one nap oh, and yeah. all this, all this shit happened. Man. Before we get into that, let's get into some good shit. And then uh we're gonna get into the we're gonna get to the nitty gritty this evening. Uh I think we all got a lot to say this evening about some things. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's not even waste no time. And let's get straight off into this shit. Uh, we're going to start the show off tonight. Uh, narrowing down, going ahead and getting this final four of the top MCs before 2000. We getting this bracket on down. We almost at the final two. Going ahead and crowning that winner very shortly. But tonight we got the final four. Um, I got the pod squad votes in. Um, they threw a monkey wrench in the game this week, too. So, uh that ought to be yeah. interesting. Um, and uh, the website that I was hosting the bracket on also threw a little monkey wrench in my game. So uh, you will notice some different things this week, but we're going to still keep it pushing. Go ahead and get this done. Uh, can y'all see that on your screen? It's loading. It's up there. Bet I it. see the chance. Bet it. All right. So as you can see, <laughs> We are down to the final two. We got Nas versus Busta Rhymes and Tupac versus Jay-Z. Uh, we are about to go ahead and kick it right off. Does anybody want to take it first on any of the brackets or how y'all yep. want it? Uh, go, we can go Tupac, Jay-Z. Let's kick it. Okay. Now, lyrically, I'm going to say Jay-Z. Um, flat out is a better lyricist all around. Um Tupac can paint a very vivid picture, but his skill set, once again, as I say, we always reference him, stopped at a certain point and then and, and could not mature. Um, at a certain point, Jay Z's storytelling skills sucked, but as he grew into a better artist and into the phenomenon and mogul he is now, his story, his storytelling skills matched his lyrical ability, which made him the total piece of an artist to me. Um, I feel like when it comes to an uh, artist's wordplay and lyrical ability, uh, lyrical ability, it's not only how you twist your words, but what you can do with them. And I feel that Jay-Z just outdoes Tupac in that realm. Um, marketability, um, even though Jay-Z is making all the money right now, um, Tupac name still rings bells. And you got Tupac's hologram still doing shows. So um, it's really tough when you get to marketability between the two, so I'm going to come back to marketability. Stage show, I'm going to say Jay-Z. Um, that's it. Just going to say Jay-Z. Stage show. <laughs> oh, um, but when it comes to back to marketability, uh, I'm going to give marketability to Tupac because even though he's dead, he's still his spirit and, and just his name it's still making money. I don't know who it's making money for, but it's still there. You still having two pop conversations on different podcasts, different for for different reasons. You still have people come and tell Tupac stories decades after he's been gone. Um, Jay Z is still around, so we don't know if when he's gone, will his name still be synonymous with the culture as Tupac's name is, 
but I'm just gonna say marketability right now. I see Tupac being more marketable. Um, the realms he put himself in, the movies, um, the projects he put himself in, the the amount of albums he has had come out since he's died. Um, so unlike unlike Big, who only had a limited amount of albums, Tupac albums continue even though they were still written while he was still alive. And his material may not have matured with the years, it was still ample material to pull out and have several different albums come out. So I want to say marketability Tupac. So Jay-Z 2-1, but Tupac stuff, so it's always going to be pop. So Jay-Z in this one. Okay. Okay, so we got Jay-Z popping off early with an early start, uh, Pat. Do you want to take the next? Um, I can, I guess. Um, let's see. Let's see. Marketing, lyricism, stage presence. All right, I'll go with stage presence. I feel like all right. I love Jay-Z stage show right now, but I still feel like Tupac is just his personality anyway. It has a more domineering stage presence or whatever, just in general. Like I, I feel like if if he was still alive or whatever, he just he would command the crowd pretty much. Um, lyricism or, or whatever, lyricism and marketing. This is where I feel like where time takes over the brackets pretty much because um, Tupac's not here to for us to know how he would have progressed as an artist, but Jay-Z is. Jay-Z. And I mean, it's an unfair advantage in his life. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how it is. So I would still say, I would still say lyricism, Jay-Z and Tupac is neck to neck to me. Um, for I feel like <laughs> that sounds like some, some type of surgery. A neck to neck to me. No, it does. It does. Uh, God dang, my dialect get in the way. <laughs> That's what that is. But um, lyricism, I feel like they're neck to neck, 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 neck. They're one on one pretty much. Uh, <laughs> me and my girlfriend and my girlfriend. <laughs> um, neck to neck. So going to go uh, marketing as the tiebreaker. And I feel like Jay-Z has that pretty much. I feel like to, to answer the question is Jay-Z is going to be around after he, like if they're going to still speak about him when he passed, there's no way I can see him not. He's, he has too much of an imprint in the culture or whatever. Um, he may have had to live longer to put that imprint in there or whatever, and Tupac may not have to had, um, I would say, been in the game as long as Jay and already have his imprint. But yeah, I think I think life is that is that cheat code right here pretty much no disrespect um at all but uh yeah i think jay-z got it pretty much okay um before i say mine i'll go ahead and say what the pod squad vote was uh, and i think this is the first time we had a vote where the pod squad actually voted a tie so mm-hmm. um since the pod squad gets two votes um i'm just going to give them both a vote here call it even um at this point, it don't matter what I'm going to say. Um, but I'll just say, outside of stage presence, Jay-Z gets the other two to me. Actually, by a pretty wide margin. Um, Jay-Z does a lot of what Pac does as far as making raps that are relatable, um, kind of poignant about some type of social issue and also going to give you some hood shit in the same token. Um, but Jay-Z just does it with better punchlines, metaphors, similes. Like, he has more in his repertoire in the way he give it to you. Uh, Tupac is very just straight and very matter-of-fact. Um, it's mm-hmm. not a lot of flowery language outside of his poems. So, um, 
when you talk about lyricism, I got to get to Jay Z Bow Mile and marketability is not even close. Um, when I look at them at their peaks, um, I would say Jay Z's peak is probably the hard, the end, like that middle of the hard knock life song uh-huh. through Blueprint. That was probably like his highest of highs. And then he's had like other really high moments and kind of has just maintained a level of high, like a pretty high level. But I'd say his peak was probably there. And then for Tupac uh, being in a different era a little bit, I'd say his peak was probably like uh, from maybe a month after Juice dropped to, I would say, to his death. So you but you got a good chunk of years to just both of them on their peak, but I would say that Jay-Z was probably bigger and sustained bigger has like when Jay-Z came out, he was a kind of he was pretty big. Like Tupac, when he first came out, we really didn't know him when he was with uh Digital Underground. Like I mean mm-hmm. I, 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 Yeah, Digital Underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh but uh somebody kept wanting to say diggable planets. I'm tripping. But um, I feel like over time, when I look at their different points of their careers, Jay-Z had a bigger start, uh, a higher peak, and then he just had more money-making avenues because he was more on his business. Like, Tupac had the films and stuff, but, like, when you talk about generating money, Jay Z, who had a label, I mean, he he was running Def Jam, like he he was able to find so many ways to impact the business side of things that it's hard for me to compare him to too many people on on the marketability piece alone. So, Jay Z two one four one by the votes, <clears throat> he moves on. Um, here's a here's a random question. I ask it. Um. You know, T- Tupac was an activist. And technically, Jay Z is an activist. Okay. Whatever. Do you think Jay Z's version of activism is like the updated version of activism that Tupac was on? Because it's like they're, they're fighting the same, it, it's like they got the same cause, they just go about it differently. I'll say this. Pretty much. I feel like. I love them both, but I'm all about, I am a big on effectiveness. Like, mm-hmm. say what you want, all that, that's that's great. What happened? What action steps were taken? What impact was made? And when you look at impact after activism, impact of their activism on like actual tangible things of people getting out of prison or rules being changed or companies updating their policies. I would say Jay-Z has done more and had a bigger impact with his activism. But I would say with Pac, he was kind of like the, it's kind of like uh, Dr. J and Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. Like Michael Jordan is a far better player, but without Dr. J, you can't have Michael Jordan because you don't get him jumping from free throw lines and you don't get him going to be a, a above the rim type player like Dr. J. You don't get a lot of what made Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, especially in the years when he was making the league without that. You don't, I don't think you get a activist Jay-Z without, without pop. Tupac kind of making it cool for like for a certain type of street rapper to be really into mm-hmm. activism. Like I feel like it, rappers have always kind of had a hand in social issues in some form or fashion, but I feel like Pac kind of made it cool for like the average street rapper, like that hard nigga off the yeah. corner that ain't thinking about shit else to be like, yo, man, fuck this. I got to get my sh- shit together. I got to get my community right. Um, And I think Jay-Z stems from that tree. I, I think as we get to like these these top uh, rappers in general, we start to see the blueprints of the generations after generations afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay Z is a blueprint, Pac is a blueprint, you know, Buster's a blueprint in some way or 
for him. He, he's a blueprint. You know Nas, I, you might not like him, but he's a blueprint too. No, I don't like him, but I will say this. Objectively speaking, like I don't like him, but I am objective enough to like recognize his greatness in what he does. And I'll mm-hmm. say this. It's funny that all four of these that made it to the top four, they are all representative of that crux when hip hop went from a certain style of like lyricism to a more in-depth, intricate. It was like, yeah. you could, they were the first babies of that first generation. Like that first generation was dying out and these guys came in and was like, all right, everything y'all did since y'all laid this foundation, we about to say fuck just putting up some walls. We about to put the walls up, drywall. We gonna go ahead and throw some electricity in this bitch. Hey, go ahead and bring that ceiling in. We got you on the shingles. Don't worry about it. We got the windows coming in next week. Like they, they, they accelerated the growth because of what they did. And they kind of set a blueprint for hip hop to kind of start crossing genres more. They kind of set a blueprint mm-hmm. for a certain level of intricacy um, in your lyric. They set a bar for even um, the, they started the authenticity factor. That generation is what started to like, whatever you are, whatever you rap about, like be at. Mm-hmm. Buster Rhymes always had these really wild animated lyrics. He never showed me anything but that. Nas had all these introspective, like poetic raps about shit that you see in the hood. He's never seemed to be anything but that a hood poet. Like uh, Jay Z, he see he always seemed like the drug dealer turned businessman that was like kind of always just kind of aware of what was going on around him and kind of just like you could tell even though he was coming from a certain background, he had that finger on the pulse of a bigger energy in life. Mm-hmm. He's remained that to this day. Like they all have been very authentic. Like Tupac was always like, "I'm a revolutionary, and I'm I want to hang out with nothing but the the people, the, the outcasts of society that everybody says ain't the worst of the worst." Because them would be the ones that started the revolution with me. He died on that. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, you daddy know, did it. You know, I I, th- I think that's a cool little um, coincidence that the top four happened to be the top four that kind of shifted hip hop to the next generation of what it would now become from what we have it as now. Okay. Like, I feel like it, even if we, uh, what, what we did the after 2000s, like even those artists were like people who were like part of the shift from Jay-Z and, and kind of that kind of, generation to now what we know as hip hop now that genre bending that singing more more that type of stuff you know so I, I, melodic I see the, yeah the more um yeah yeah you can see the jumps in both lists so I think that's cool yeah yeah well let's get into this Nas versus Buster though I'll go first because like you said I don't like Nas but I'm gonna be objective um I'm not, I'm not gonna just you know Shit on them, just shit on them, shit on the stage. Even though I would like to, but I say when it comes to stage presence, I don't know a person on the list that we had that was really close. At least not close that I thought that would make it to this level. Um, when you get to this level of rapping, it's, a, it's really nobody else that got the stage presence like Buster. Buster is a, in a world of his own with, with the energy he brings. Like he is like a sphere. He has his own gravity. If that makes sense. So uh definitely gonna we'll get stage present the bus. Um lyricism. This one is tough for me because I think it's really preference. Like I think they are both really elite lyricists. I think that Buster is more the hell is that saying? Uh my bad. Uh Buster is more focused on syllable count, um how many rhyme patterns and cadences he can give you whereas Nas is more um, focused on how many concepts and like metaphors he can fit in um, I don't feel like either one of them do a whole lot of like um, or add so that they don't really give you a whole lot of like those no, it, it's a lot of just big metaphors really uh-huh. you know what I mean like um, but I think they just serve a different purpose um, off of preference I like Buster but I'll be honest 
I think that Nas has done more with his lyric. Like as far as skill level, I would say they're equal. I prefer Buster's rhyme. Oh, that was funny, Buster rhyme. Um, but Nas has a wider palette with his lyrics. Like he's he's giving me more concepts and more bags of like thought. Like he's giving me more angles that he's touched upon. So I'm a, I'm a roll with uh, Nas on the lyricism, and then marketability. Gotta say it's Buster, yo. Like it's weird, but on the criteria, like B- Buster, I don't know his all of his personal business things. Like if he got like money in crypto or something like that, I don't know. But I do know as far as like name recognition, getting your name out there, being able to generate funds, uh, endorsements, things you've been a part of. He's equal with Nas on the movie game, but he's past him, I feel like, on like hosting. Um, People wanted him to endorse products. People wanted his name recognition with them. Like, I feel like Buster's a huger name. Like, I feel like if we went through a crowd that had Buster Rhymes and Nas both with us, more people in Japan is going to recognize Buster Rhymes. So, uh, I got to get the Buster Man 2 1. Oh, bro. Um, Let's start with stage presence. Um, that's the easiest one. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Buster for stage presence. Um, like you said, no one can match his energy. No one can move a crowd like Buster. I don't think it's no one in hip hop that has been in hip hop or in the in the near future that will be in hip hop that can command a crowd like Buster. He is Mr. Stage Performance. He is Mr. Stage Presence. Um, so regardless of who you put against him in that category, he wins every time hands down. Um, let's go on marketability. Um, outside of hip hop, how far has each man or how far can each man's name take them into and in how many different realms? Um, both have been in movies, but Buster has been in more movies, um, way more movies. Um, Nas has been into my recollection what one movie was better. You might be right. I don't know why. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. You might be right. Um, But Buster, Buster, um, as we said last time, or many times before, Buster's been in High Learning. He was in that Halloween movie. I was in Halloween H2O. He was in that. Um, he was in something else, a couple other movies he was in. Um, so movies getting that bread. Um, TV shows, I don't know if either man be in a TV show. Nah, it's more of a uh, stay to itself type dude when it comes to those type of things. I don't know if he's like been he have, uh, have afforded those. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely more cameos, definitely. Um, I don't know if Nas has been afforded the opportunity to have these type of avenues brought to him and he's declined them i I don't know that but as far as the people that have been in these avenues and have the ability to draw that revenue for say buster and those avenues um outside of entertainment uh don't know what either man is doing um i know they may stand for good issues but i don't really see no either man on the forefront of any issue really doing something out in public um, you may see their name is mentioned in the hustle and bustle with everyone else's names eventually, but as far as standing on the forefront with their names meaning something on an issue, neither one. Um, so it all comes down to the money. Um, both men are long have really, really long standing careers. Um, continues good music, continues album after album after album. But um, I'm just gonna say marketability as far as the true criteria, I'm gonna have to say busted. Um Lyrics hands down, Nas. Um, just gonna be Nas hands down. Um, it's not only about once again what you say, but what you can do with it. Um, Buster's fantastic with his wordplay. Um, fantastic, high energy. Um, but sometimes he doesn't hit the point. He doesn't hit that mark. Um, I feel like Nas, regardless of if I like his music or not, I feel like once he has a concept. 
he hits it more consistently than Buster does music lyrically. I feel like whatever point he's trying to portray in a song, he he hits it at least eight times out of ten. Well, Buster hits it at least five times out of ten. Um, but once again, don't get me wrong, Buster's music is entertaining. Both both men bring very entertaining music to the platform or to the um, to the table. But at the end of the day, Nas gives me the better lyrical content as far as something just to, or, or my, what I was like about mentally, I mean, just what I look for. So I'm gonna give the Nas on lyrical, but at the end of the day, bust to one when it comes to marketability and stage presence. Okay. Matt? Oh yeah, I picked Nas. Um... Fuck all that shit. I pick not. Hello, you said Buster, <laughs> you said Buster face. Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure. All right. All right. Okay. I, I pick I pick Buster for stage presence or whatever. But everything else okay. was not. So yeah, and I I knew I was gonna be beat out, but man, I was gonna say fuck it. I'm gonna pick Nas anyway. So yeah, that's my explanation, and um, they're both my one of both my favorite MC list. They're up there, so but I pick not. So yeah, all right, next one. <laughs> it's, it's no more next one. Uh, but the pod squad has not voted. And um unfortunately for me and Faith, the pod squad actually had their back. Uh here. And of course. I voted for Nas. Um it was uh what sixty some percent to thirty percent, thirty some percent. So mm-hmm. yeah. it is what it is. It was uh pretty overwhelming. So uh, Nas actually moves on. So next week we will have the ultimate battle. The 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 debate that has been lingering since the nineties. If you grew up in the uh, if you grew up in the nineties, uh, born in the eighties, you probably definitely have had this argument with somebody at some point in your life. Um, especially back in the nineties, uh, early two thousands when this kind of kicked off as a beef. So uh. Yeah, man. Uh, Nas versus Jay Z next week, y'all. Nas versus Jay Z, and next week we are about to crown the winner of the top MC before two thousand. Help us crown it, uh, Pod Squad. Remember, your votes counted two votes, and uh, y'all can really shift the tide next week. Uh, so check us out on Twitter. The poll will be up on our Twitter page. It's at the partners on Twitter, at the partners on Twitter. Please make sure you check out the Twitter. Make sure you vote, 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 vote. Don't let us say some wild shit and then y'all be mad because we didn't vote for your person. So vote, 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 vote. Get your votes in. And uh, yeah, man, that's the topic. What the fuck are you laughing at like that, face? You are. Right. The poll was going to be up on the side. Man. Oh, man. Right, man. Right. He ain't right at all. All right. All right. So uh, we, now that we got the business out of the way, man, I feel like we got the man. I'm glad you said he ain't right, man. Because I'm going to tell you somebody else that ain't fucking right. Um, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of Chris Rock uh, last night. Um, Now, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all go. Cause I'm, I'm sure y'all have some uh, thoughts and uh, opinions on this, but I wanted to kind of lay some shut out and kind of throw my thoughts out there and see what y'all think about them. And then, you know, yeah. Um, so my brain went to two different places when I saw this smack uh, heard around the world, as they call it. The first place my mind went to is like the PC thoughts. So I looked at it like uh, this is pretty much just like, the end result. This is a drop in the bucket that was already on edge, and this was the one that made it overflow. Uh, mm-hmm. Media coverage of his relationship has been relentless, and at times overboard. Like it's been kind of some unnecessary shit. Um, he's had his masculinity questioned for the past few years, which can definitely put a man into a defensive posture when he feels like he's run out of options and he has to defend himself. Um, I also looked at it from the angle of like, you know, men are definitely lacking emotional intelligence and self-confidence these days, which I feel like is leading to more incidents 
of violence. Uh, I'll get to that a little later after I let y'all kind of get your shit off. But yeah, I definitely think it's some some shit to the current man and how they're dealing with emotion. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Men should never handle anything publicly unless it's an apology or a thank you. So those were like my PC thoughts that I had. And my real nigga moments came in. And, and I started to like look at this like, I was like, all right, fuck being a rational person. This is how kids think. Alopecia is not a goddamn terminal illness. You tell me Jada got cancer, some shit like that, HIV with a medicine to make her hair come out, so, something like that. I'm with you. Rally ho, let's ride for Jada. But alopecia ain't no goddamn terminal illness. She just bald. She literally is just bald. That that's that's really all that it is. It, it ain't no more to that. She just bald. So why are we sitting here tripping like this is a big deal? She just bald. Then I thought, oh, go ahead. What you about to say, Pat? I don't want to. I was going to say it it because people, the common man is not going to know what alopecia is. I didn't know. To be God honest with you, and then every time you ever seen something in media where the the disease or virus or the condition that they have makes the person bald, you instantly think cancer. And, and look at me before and then, before, <clears throat> before this joke, did you think Jada had anything wrong with her, or did nope. you think she had just cut her hair? I think she just went crazy and cut her hair because she's been going crazy. <laughs> I knew she had. That. I knew she had alopecia, so and I, I know alopecia is just a hair condition. <laughs> I'm gonna say this: <laughs> men with premature baldness have been joked on for years, and not one person says anything about it. Mm-hmm. If at this point comedians can't even do the job they contracted for, that we know that they're gonna do every year, this is not like just the first year comedians have hosted Austin and roasted to the crowd. Like this is almost a staple at all awards events in the industry. Like, the host roast the audience. That's kind of part of it. It's a room full of celebrities. What the fuck else are comedians going to do? So if they can't even do their job no more, they can't even joke on bald head people no more, then God damn it, humor and comedy is fully dead. Uh, now, after I thought that, my brain immediately went to, nigga, should have had that fucking energy for August Alcina. He ain't have none of that smack a motherfucker energy when it was uh, entanglement time. His hands won't entangle it. Nobody drawn in. And I bet that nigga wouldn't have done that shit to the rock neither. He really picked and chose his target. Like he made sure it was somebody that uh, he thought he'd get that shit off on. I ain't say I don't see him doing that shit to no no nobody with no muscles. He ain't smacking Vin Diesel up. He ain't rolling up on Terry Crews, knocking the shit out of him. Somebody Fuck should, out of here with that shit. Uh, Some, somebody and, should. And no, he won't protect no goddamn black woman. The nigga was being sensitive and his ego was hurt. Like, let's be clear. A nigga said a G.I. Jane joke. Not fuck your wife's alopecia. Not fuck you and your wife. Not your wife is horrible. Not your wife is a cheater and she's a, a, a harlot. Not your wife is dragging your name. He ain't say nothing about nothing, but your wife got obviously short hair, a very short haircut. G.I.J. too. That's a good joke. That 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 checks out. <laughs> if you don't get your sensitive ass on, Will Smith. Uh, now, I will say, like, yeah, he might have been on the edge, but man, fuck that. Get your sensitive shit out of here. Uh <clears throat> But yeah, what did y'all think about uh, this yeah. amazingly laid right hand smack that happened? I'll let you go first, Ben. Um, you might want to go first. I have a lot of thoughts. Okay, <laughs> so I feel I, I, when I saw it, I clapped because I felt like Will gave an Oscar winning performance at the Oscars and then won an Oscar for a totally different performance because that shit won't real. That shit was fake as a bitch. So you have the cap that they like if you ever yes, 
I've slapped motherfuckers before, and I've been slapped. Nothing like that was in the realm of being slapped or slapping a motherfucker. The shit looks staged. I say it's two actors doing their job of acting. You on the most, excuse me, for saying that the most white, one of the most whitest stages on national TV. Do you really think the people that run that shit and allowed it to go national on TV would have let that? No, because any other time some shit would have happened on that show, they could stop it, make it whatever little excuse you want to. No, it went out filmed on purpose. That was staged. Will no, Smith, you saw the they whole got like thing. A short time when, if you delay, slow it up and walk it. Yeah, understandable. No oh, shit, there you go. That nigga understood too hard, did it? Yeah, he just Drop went out. His connection. That nigga said, I understand. Fuck that shit, I understand. Bow. There you go. I don't think nothing like that. If something had that on the Oscars, we've never seen it. And I'm sure people have had disagreements or whatever on stage behind stage in the crowd, but you never seen it. But this time you do, right before he's it, right before he gets an Oscar. I think it's stage. Them niggas know each other. Them niggas seen each other backstage. You feel me? Like for what they stand for and what they try to do for the culture and what they speak of, I don't see them niggas or see them two black men. We're gonna reference them tonight. We're gonna see these two black men doing that on that stage and being serious. No, he's a comedian. We seen the last time he was performing and hosted the Oscars, he did the same shtick. He was joking on Will and Jada. Okay, y'all back in the news. Y'all was back popping last year. Of course, he's going to do the same thing and joke on Will and Jada. Of course. He's I, seen the motherfuckers. They seen him before the show. Of course. He's the host of the fucking show. What, what's the end game of this? Like, with, uh, like with Juicy Smollett, he staged, you know, his little event. I, I can see the end game. You... On the show, you're not sure about the show. You trying to pop off? It was it was on an award show. It's pure entertainment. That's what it is. And but look what how do they get out of this it. entertainment? It's entertainment. You got two of the biggest stars you, in Hollywood. Enter ratings. Look at their name. It, their names are being mentioned right before now. Will and Jada had faded out. We had p- people putting petitions, in, so they couldn't come out and put, talk about their relationship. What is Chris Rock doing before? Them. Is that you feel me like hey, they, y'all don't names think that the Academy Awards being a a, sh- a popular show with like pop culture that Will winning an Oscar his first one if I'm not mistaken like that wouldn't have been huge news anyway. No, I feel like it's been drummed out by the same same normal Oscar news that's every year that people there's not enough black people winning. Sure, we have one or two, but what about more? It's been the same shit, so they changed their narrative. But okay, we're gonna do this. Bring this news are here, or they could have flipped, or they're trying to flip the narrative either way, because they could be like, okay, we let more black people on now. Look what happened when we did. Look at this. If they so want to flip the narrative. Why would Will and Chris Rock go along with that staging if that was the ploy? I don't have their mentality, so I don't know, but my thing is this shit won't real. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't, I, I won't and can't give into that shit being real. This shit didn't look real. The reaction that Chris gave won't want to realistic reaction to being slapped on national TV by another man. No. How Will walked off and smirked about it, like, it won't, it won't, no. It just won't serious enough to be, okay, you joke, I'm a wife, I'm gonna come up and defend her, but a slap. No. No. I've seen Will Smith when he slapped the motherfucker, when that nigga tried to kiss Will Smith. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He he got a history of throwing slaps, so to me, this shit checks out, like, in his his behavior. He's pretty nipsy hustle. He get annoyed, he smack a nigga. Look at that slap. But my thing is, look at that slap compared to the, to the crazy slap. Total difference. You can yeah, see the difference the in him. Different. The difference in the mannerisms. Mm-mm, not the spacing. I'm talking about the mannerisms. See how he walked off from both slaps. One, he walked off. He was still angry as shit. I just slapped the motherfucker. You tried to kiss me. The other one, I walked. I slapped the motherfucker and I walked off and I smirked. And then I caught myself and they got back to my seat. Fake as shit. Okay. Well, uh, I put it. I put it like this: just as real as that shit look, the hmm. fights in Creed, the movie Creed, looked real too, didn't it? It hmm. looked really like Michael B. Jordan was hitting niggas in that movie Creed, right? Hmm. Actors acting. Uh, well, uh, yeah. let's put it in the realm that maybe it wasn't 
Maybe if it was real. And this people just need to leave Will alone. I'm I'm on team Will leave Will alone pretty much. Yeah, it, we'll need to go so let's there. so let's let's put in the to in the play that let's say it was real or whatever. Um it's all it all goes back to Jada, man. It all goes back to Jada. You got like four or five years of people just demasculating you as a man. Yeah. Period. In that four or five years, there's it was actually a man trying to go up to you, kiss you, or whatever. Or whatever. You had to slap him right then and there. That should have been that should have been first, first warning. You know what I'm saying? Um it's going to be a lot of people with their takes that's going to happen. Their the, the five second, uh, this is my expert opinion, is going to be somebody that say this is toxic masculinity. I think I just mm-hmm. saw it on The View. Um, it's going to be some hotel nigga somewhere saying, see, this is what they do. They get black men on this national stage so we can all look like we're monkeys in front of them on their stage and stuff. Um, it's gonna be a few. I'm I'm surprised Umar didn't do that, but I think he said <laughs> he's Team Will because Philly, or whatnot. Oh. So, and and then he and then you're gonna run on the train of protect black women, protect black women. Yeah, or I don't want to hear that shit about this shit, man. Fuck out of here, man. First, first so of you all, tell I us, think so you tell us any nigga at a comedy show, his wife get joked on, he get he supposed to get up and punch a nigga, smack a nigga, hit a nigga. Cause he, cause man, fuck out of here. Take a joke. The, this the other thing. You're gonna also get the extra alpha male ass niggas that were, man. That couldn't be me. Cause if I was Chris Rock, man, man, it couldn't be me. If I was Will, either, either way, again. you still would have got smacked. Or security would have got you. Nigga ain't know that shit was gonna happen. He saw his homeboy rolling up on him. He ain't know that nigga was about to get smacked. He ain't realize that shit exactly. got real till that shit was too late. Exactly. Exactly. He was joking the whole time. Oh, Richard. <laughs> no, that wasn't Richard. He should have been that like, was... that nigga smacked me in August. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he should have said. And they would have got to, he would have got the crowd back. And it's, but I don't know. Chris, <laughs> Chris, after he got um, slapped <laughs> to August or whatever, he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't on his A game but so much. Or whatever he still was perfect. Nigga, you trying to about, say you know, face and you just got the shit slapped out of your on national team. Yeah. How 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 much of an A game do you have left? And you didn't and, do nothing. So so now you got like a million thoughts running through your head. Like, all right. First of all, I just got smacked. Second of all, I ain't do nothing. How this about to look? What they gonna say? How many people done blown up my phone already before I even get off the stage? Oh shit! I still gotta fill this time. The teleprompter still going. Damn! What's the next award? Oh, like, uh, yeah, that nigga. <laughs> Will, Will, Will has got to this point. He's persevered this far ahead, and he's actually, um, over the years, he has gone from okay, the rap, the rap dude that got his own sitcom to an actual serious actor, to the likings of Denzel Washington. Mm. He's at, he's gotten to that point. In the midst of this point. His family yeah, he like Kanye at, West fucking up award shows. At this point, at the side, just like Kanye, well, no, nah, Kanye, he fucks his own shit up too. At this point, you're doing all this. You're looking like the perfect guy right now. Can't do no wrong with Will Smith, pretty much. But your family is running wild. Okay, Jaden's mm-hmm. out here. He don't know if you're a boy or girl today. Coach, <laughs> he, he don't know, he don't know, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let him be free, whatever. Because Jaden is a perfect example of seeing a black person free for the first time, like, like have the full privilege and attributes of like high class American society, but you're black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that. Jaden's doing all kinds of crazy shit. You got to explain your son. Willow is agreeing with everything your crazy wife says. 
I apologize. Don't slap me, Will. But come on, man. Like, you got this going on. Jada, I don't know what's up with her, but she has to open her mouth about stuff so she can feel real to her little fan base or whatever. Not to say she has a little fan base, excuse me. To say her red table fan base. She's putting that out there in the midst of trying to be real. Then you got this loose cannon by August Alcina coming out in his feelings saying, hey, I need to figure out some way to put myself out there again. I've been fucking Will's wife. Let me use this so I can get my name out there again and to get my music out there again. You deal with all of that shit. And at your moment, the one moment for you, you probably already knew you won the Oscar. You know what I'm saying? At this moment, here comes somebody coming around just bringing some type of just it will now mind you at first he was laughing and i think it was one of those laughs like <laughs> nigga i already got enough turmoil in my home you're starting more turmoil just, second of all this is your second time doing this talking about my wife and then tell you what and happened, then, yo. the nigga was over there and he was already getting pissed the shit was said, and then next thing you know, when that camera cut away from him for the second, Jada said something to him like, you gonna let him talk about me like that? Mm-hmm. I can guarantee you she put a batter in that nigga back to go up there and do some dumb shit. And let me let me not, let me stop right there because I know it's gonna be a lot of in, in Jada's offense. So like I told you, it's gonna be everyone saying their thesis and think pieces about this situation or whatever. Because when I woke up, we doing I it right now. Up, to the slap piece. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it right now. But mine's an anti-think piece or whatever. On Jada's behalf, everyone's going to say, um, that's what a man's supposed to do, defend his wife, which is true. Defend your wife. There's ways of doing it or whatever. Some women, some women, they like that shit. They get off on it. They get off on the rough stuff. They get off on, okay, he's talking junk. There's some women that you know you may go out and they might actually get into some shit just to see you in the element. I've been put to the test a couple of times myself. <laughs> Whatever. It happens. She she gives me that vibe. She didn't at first. She does now. <laughs> For, for Man, that nigga should have took that shit in the back though. Like you don't fucking Will Smith, you can get access to a green room if you really want one in there real quick, and you can holler Shoot at that nigga Chris Rock or something. Hey man, let me holler at you real quick. I don't like what you said about my wife. And y'all go in the room and you do whatever you want to do, and then y'all come on down and you keep it moving, and then you ain't got the paparazzi in your business, which is now going to give them more fodder to fuck with you more, which was I thought. And it seems to be the shit that's causing your fucking meltdown in the first place. It's, that slap wasn't, that slap, Chris Rock felt the slap. He was the sacrificial lamb, the martyr for, yeah, for, for, the past for that years. slap. That slap is really was me snapping on Jada. That was every red table talk. That that was, that was me in one snap. hit. He he was actually snapping on Jada. He can't say it, but he, in his head, yo, I am tired of her shit. I done went through all your shit and you still, you still testing my gangster. Oh, you, you gonna keep like, my time? No, it's this real is my deep. time. If you read his book like I am right now, a lot of this behavior makes a lot of sense. Like, in that moment, I really feel like he felt like he was back in the position of, that's my mother. I'm a defender this time. I'm going to do something this time. Mm-hmm. And I realized that in this situation, nobody's done anything to your fucking wife. It was a fucking joke, nigga. Take a guy. Like, I, I'm all about, like, somebody got a real physical disability of a terminal illness, um, like, some type of mental illness. I'm with you. Don't joke on that. But joking on the person 
it's almost like inhumane if you're a comedian and you're contracted to do that job, which is to host and basically roast people. Like, so I'm going to skip across every, I'm going to talk about everybody else in the room, but I'm going to leave y'all alone. Now that make you look weirder as fuck. I ain't mm-hmm. talking about them. They must have had something. They must have told him not to say nothing about nothing. Or it must have been some type of NDA where they could where he couldn't say, you know, like it's gonna be more shit. Like, nigga, fuck out of here. Take a joke. Nigga ain't saying nothing that crazy. He didn't disrespect your wife, so I don't want to hear that protect black women. Like, get the fuck out of here, yo. If that had uh-huh. been a if that had been a woman clowning the the bald head husband of some actress, nobody gives a fuck. Uh-uh. But you trying to tell me because it was a black woman that had a bald head, we supposed to be like, stop the world for that shit? Man, get the fuck out of here. You miss me with that shit. And I'm all I'm, about protecting black women, but this ain't no, this ain't one of them cases. Not this. I, this I'm it. not gonna, I'm not gonna get on well. I'm not. You say you're not I, gonna, I'm gonna not get gonna, on well? I wouldn't either. I'm not, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get on well, well about it. Pause about it. I feel like if anything, and when when it comes to Will, we just need to pray that he gets the help and that he definitely needs the help. Whatever. Definitely the or whatever. help. But I am going to get on everybody else. Um, I'm definitely going to get on the media and all the two cent bloggers that's out there that got to say something every five freaking seconds. I know that probably technically includes us, but yep, it it's. I mean. I, I personally like the moment. I like that he slapped him. Chris Rock didn't, but I did. You know why? Because it made me laugh. And it made me look at him like, all right, Will Smith is a human. That's a human person. Because everybody can sit on their high horse because that's all I've been seeing all day. The, I've seen the red pill alpha male saying, Two sides or whatever. It's to some is the yeah. If it was me, I would slap the heck out of my. Um, if it was, <laughs> I'm coughing my ass off. Um, if it was, if it was me or whatever, I would have said something to Jacob or something. All the red people. This is a perfect example of misdirected mis- masculinity or whatever. And you know, there's gonna pe- be people on Jada's side. This is a perfect example of toxic masculinity. And this, that, and the third. Shut the fuck up, everybody. Shut no, this the just fuck. Some ass nigga that couldn't control himself in that moment and was like, I can't take this shit no more. I ain't gonna be no bitch. Shut the, shut the fuck up, man. He's been having to have to, to stand on his tippy toes and walk on his tippy toes and be Mr. Clean Cut all his motherfucking life. Let Will Smith have one nigga moment. Kanye has a nigga moment every week. And y'all give excuses to his shit all the fucking time. Yes, they Let deserve Will Smith have his nigga moment. I hope they burn the <laughs> <laughs> you, you wanted your cellular you baby. Said, all right, there, boy. God damn. Let, let Will Smith have his nigga moment, man. That nigga has survived disses from Eminem. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He's this this is from the hip hop culture saying he's too soft or whatever. Yeah. Comparisons by Tupac or whatever. And to be God honest, be to be God honest, he is the between him and Jay-Z, he's the only other Negro out here or whatever that can be compared to a Tupac or whatever. And the, and the same people that's comparing him to those Tupac, if you put him to, towards Tupac, Tupac is going to be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I say, let Will Smith have his nigga moment. Okay, he has a sensitive moment. What up? What not? What? Like, if if it was, all right, yeah, he's in, in front of the public and stuff like that, what not? If, if it was any other, it was in the streets, or whatnot, we would have been in the barbershop saying, yeah, you should have punched that nigga. Everyone's in the wrong. Everyone's in the wrong. Everyone that's saying that somebody's wrong in the situation is in the wrong. <laughs> wrong. Or whatever. 
the Oscars is in the wrong for putting Chris Rock up there, and they know they're gonna give they're gonna give um, Will Smith the Oscar. Technically, I'm not saying for real. No, I'm not not saying that. Hey, Everyone's in the wrong. We I, I can't I can't. I respect what you're saying, but I can't roll with giving another black man a pass on doing some dumb shit on, on fucking national television just because he had a sensitive moment. Like, I ain't about to keep giving niggas a pass. I don't give a damn how funny it was. Like, yeah, did I laugh at the memes? Absolutely. Do I condone what he did, though? Hell no. I think that shit was stupid. Like, I don't think I don't condone it either. either. If you want to fight the nigga that bad, do that shit in a way that don't make you look stupid at the end of the day, or embarrass you at the end of the day, or take away from your real moment. Like to me, there's other ways to handle it. Especially like if we're talking about some twenty year old men, that's different. When I was young, I thought differently, so I can understand the mentality of like a young person like popping off. Like I get that mentality. I get why the Source Awards used to be a problem. You got a bunch of young 18 to 22 year old men full of testosterone, alcohol, and reefer pissed at each other. So I, I get that. But we talking about what is Will? 50 some year old man? Will That's pushing true. 60. <clears throat> you mean to tell me in all of these years, you ain't been to nothing or been through nothing that to taught you more? Like, take you when you're 21. In that same situation, I can see you going up and smacking a nigga. But you now at 38, I don't see you, I don't see that being your very first impulse. And if that is your impulse, I don't see you acting on that in that way in that particular moment with all of the other surrounding circumstances. I'll be honest, I don't see any one of us doing that. Nah, I definitely wouldn't do that. If that but, was the case, yeah. one of us would have already had an assault charge in the past 10 years for some road rage accident, some shit at the gas station, some grocery store, somebody who done did something dumb at a job. Like, somebody would have got smacked already. We come from that TTG type of mentality. Well, I'm just going to smack the shit out of your name. I ain't even about to, we ain't about to do all this. Yeah. But the fact that we have that show, like, as you get older as a man, like, at some point, you got to have some maturity about your shit. Because now, like, think about how this looks. One of the last bashes of black manhood that wasn't yet tainted by, like, all right, you got to do some old ignorant shit to be cool. Now he now he the face of smacking a nigga. So if I'm that young nigga that was holding out, man, you got people like Will Smith still, man. He ain't hitting nobody. You know, Kendrick Lamar ain't out here fighting nobody. Man, now you get somebody like that that's... Now, oh no, this nigga hitting people too. Well, I guess shit. I guess I got do do got to go to school, knock this nigga the fuck out. He talking that yeah. bullshit. Beat his ass in third period. And I'm gonna do it for the gram because Will Smith did it for the Oscar. Nigga did it on the biggest gram. Like I mean, it's it's it, it. Don't get me wrong. The real nigga shit to me, like I I get it, yeah. but not for the age, like. You're not giving me no, I'm not about to sit there and roll with like and be like, yeah, that shit cool that a 50 something year old grown ass man. And again, you tell me that Chris Rock makes a direct joke about the alopecia, like, oh fuck that disease, or you you messed up for having that disease, or you know, something like that. Cool. I, I get you. I can I can kind of understand you. That G.I. James, you man, I, I'd have ran back the joke. A good twenty times now before we uh came, man. No, nah. you should be able to hold your shit a little better than that. Catch that nigga slipping, like y'all gonna be at the same damn after party where it ain't no cameras, ain't no paparazzi. It's just you and a bunch of other celebrities. The most only way that shit getting out is was another celebrity taping that shit. Well, you, by, you, um... dog shit out of nigga. Y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking Will Smith. You can catch that nigga coming in the green room at the end of the show. The damn ca- credits rolling, and all of all of a sudden, you just hear over the mic, "Ooh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah." And the show go off. Don't nobody know what happened. You just well, somebody must have fell down the stairs. Goddamn! Like man, come on, <laughs> come on, man. Like, Greatest moment in this um, society. History. We getting sick, yo. We are getting so desensitized to dumb shit, and like we are getting sick, bro. <laughs> like, think about this. 
<laughs> People are happy that a uh, 50 something old man just smacked a nigga over a G.I. Jane joke. <laughs> practice. We talk about practice. Not a game. Not a game. Practice. Greatest performance I've seen on the office. Oh, well, they say they pieced it up by now because they, 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 you know, Puffy was being the peacemaker or whatever. He knows about, you know, he has a past experience of, you know, Smacking slapping, me. being slapped, <laughs> Smacking uh, fighting, and piecing it up later with liquor. So, yeah. I don't see so I'm, I'm pretty sure they already. I don't know. Will. Chris, Chris Rock, man, you gotta go catch your fade, bro. You mean no harm. At this point, as a man, I, don't, I ain't talking about for the public so that everybody know that you caught the fade, but it's as a man, you gotta, y'all gotta meet up at one of y'all mansions, go out in the backyard, and just scrap that shit out real quick. Like you, you got it. You you can't let that shit slide though. I ain't, I ain't about to say that. That's right either. Like yeah, oh, you know, be the bigger man. Like on TV, I think he did the right thing. Like because that shit, he that mm-hmm. shit would have been a broom ha ha. That shit would have been way worse. Two fifty something yeah. old men rolling around on the ground at the damn Oscars, looking a hot ass man. <laughs> ain't but ain't but seven niggas in the audience as it is. And then two of them beat the shit out of each other. So I'm glad that it didn't go that route too. But a fade is warranted as men. A private fade. Not for the public, not for an audience. Don't size yeah. up the paparazzi and get y'all name out there more crazy shit. Just beat the shit out of each other in, in private. And then get some Hollywood makeup artists to come make y'all look normal for a minute to that shit heal up. But a fade is an order. Cause you ain't gonna smack, you ain't, smack me, spit on me. Them two things can't happen. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'd rather you just go ahead and knock the shit out. Go ahead and knock me out there. Yeah, <laughs> I will wake up and I don't have At to least worry then about I it. I could be like, hey, man, nigga dropped me with a sucker punch. I ain't have a chance to defend myself, but a smack, <laughs> a smack and you eat it? I, I, I think you did the right thing as a grown up on national TV with a teleprompter still rolling in the credit and, and then waiting on you to announce the thing. Now, I don't know what else you could have done other than have a broom ha ha. So I'm glad you didn't do the broom ha ha on TV. But today, as I'm as we record this, an epic battle should be happening in, in one of y'all niggas' backyard. <laughs> Like epic proportion. I don't care if y'all take that shit into the to one of y'all gyms. I know y'all got them whole gyms. I know how y'all crib set up. I know y'all got a it's a space at the crib in, in a villa somewhere or something where y'all can beat the shit out of each other because that needs to happen. That that's yeah. Don't give a damn who it is in this earth. I love you, Jesus. But you smack me and we gonna catch the fade. I don't mean no harm. Like, I, I, I don't know that I have the temperament. I was just talking to my boy today riding home. He was reading about the civil rights movement. And he was like, and they were spitting on the girl Ruby Bridges and, and throwing stuff at her daddy. And she was so tough. I was like, you're right, son. She's a lot tougher than your father. He was like, why, daddy? I was like, well, son. Daddy would have probably got lynched back in the day, son. You mean hang that? <laughs> yes, son. Yeah. Daddy would. Daddy does not have the fortitude to just sit there and let somebody spit on me, son. Daddy would have stole. Daddy would have knocked one of them out, son. And daddy would have got shot. Daddy. Him, son. Yeah. Daddy would not have made it any time before the time he was born, son. Daddy didn't have that type of toughness. That's why people like Martin Luther King and Rupert Bridges was here, son. To do the things that daddy could. Because daddy would have been dead, baby. Like, I literally had that conversation. Today. Like, I don't have that fortitude. Like, I'm 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 talking about what should happen. Now, as a 38-year-old man, first of all, I ain't going up and smacking nobody. So that that's I ain't in this situation. But once you're smacked, 
your license to do it up. Like you can't smack somebody and tell no matter how to react. Like once you smack, whatever happens after that, you are completely warranted in your response. Because you shouldn't have gotten smacked. You didn't ask for that. That was not part of your day. Your rights have been infringed upon. Go to work. Chris Rock, Chris Rock did kind of have that, that, that smirk like, man, if this wasn't national television or whatever. Man. But Chris, um, Chris Rock's teeth are the size of si- soundproof paneling. He <laughs> bit the fuck out of Will. Oh, you want to throw your head? I got and he should have locked jawed on them fingers and not let go. He should have made them play the it's a rap music and go to and go to the technical difficulty sign. Like he should have bit the fuck out of that dude. Ray bees the hell out of him. Right there. Oh, so you, you smack. I got I, I saw it coming. Me tell you, you so got big ass and big teeth, and you could react at night. Ha, ha, ha. It was coming right here. It was coming right here. Ha, ha, ha. Look at that. Ha. It's a quick. I clap. can actually see him doing that. Why not? Mm-hmm. If you miss, well, you know- now it's a joke. And I don't care who you are. If you go to smack somebody and them niggas, you just feel teeth go across the palm of your hand. Yo, you're going to laugh. Like, you're going to be so shocked. And, Did this nigga nibble me? What just happened here? They tried to bite me. <laughs> Like situation diffused immediately. You, you either have just defended yourself in the most epic way possible, or you have completely diffused the situation with comedy. Either way, black people win, and, and men over the age of 35 don't look stupid as hell on TV. Now get that hand skin out your teeth, because I know you scrape some of that hand skin on your teeth. Like all this situation gave us was one old was one old man that looked stupid. And one old man that looked like a sister. That's all this gave us. The world, the world, nobody gained out of this. This is a lose, 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 the fucking lose. <laughs> we all took a L last night as that smack landed. That was a collective smack to the world. <laughs> Show you fuckers. Everybody losing tonight. I'm take Will Smith with Kamikaze on <laughs> every. Every group he's a part of, all his intersectionalities just took a collective L. Men, psh, men over 35, psh, black men, psh, older men, psh, men's men, psh, professionals, psh, <laughs> whack rappers. Psh. Oh, God bless us. I was decided to go to hell, y'all. I, I don't think you fellas are realizing it. <laughs> We going to shit. Oh, no. <laughs> See, this is the thing, though. You know how yeah, I feel about humans. Shit. You know how I feel about humans. Yes. Uh, you think I'm, it's I'm really worse? Be, hey, yo, yo, you and Sophia. You might think it's it. really worse, or do you think it's been the same? Bro. I personally think it's the same. We just have more actual recorded examples of how humans are stupid. Humans been stupid for the past <laughs> billions of years. See, when I say we're going to shit, it ain't the stupidity that's a problem. We have an equal amount of stupidity. But mm-hmm. stupidity used to be the minority and what we laughed at, not laughed with. That wasn't the fun stuff. That was the like, man, if you don't get your dumb ass out of here, like, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, baby, you're making us look bad. <laughs> Nowadays, the world has collectively said, fuck you, nigga, I got kids to feed and has lost a fucking mind and, and is tripping. And, and and the worst part is, as they trip, we are desensitized to it and are like, okay with it. Like, we are either part of the camp that enjoys it or part of the camp that has kind of just resolved to the fact of it's just where we at, then." I'm in the camp where I have lost all hope since I was 12. So this shit is no surprise for me. Yo, Sophia, Sophia got a got a point, man. Maybe it, it might be time. Go ahead and have your baby, Human, Sophia. It might be time. Humans, humans go on human. They've been humaning <laughs> since the dawn of existence. <laughs> They've been what? Human-ing? Humans are going to human. Humaning. They've been Ooh. doing a human thing. 
The human in it. That niggas that says. Well, human in it. Since we already human in it, let's get into more what the human culture is doing this week, man. It's that time, Pat. It is that time. We done started off with some fuckery. We might as well just go ahead. It's that time. Human as in I it. eat my last chip. <laughs> There's some human in it. Being a human and holding up the actual intro to the good and fuckery. What is this? Episode 71. Episode 71. <laughs> good and <laughs> fuckery! <laughs> What the hell been happening this week, Pat? Well, um, since you brought it up, Sophia might be right. Um, and then Elon Musk says people might be able to download their personalities onto Azul. a humanoid robot Tesla is making, Azul. which he says could be in moderate volume production next year. I've seen this. I've what seen this. Eli Musk. Is that Elon, Elon Musk? Musk. Oh, I might have fucked up with um. I might have misheard. Uh, yeah, they might have fucked up with the the frequency or something on the the Wi Fi. But Elon Musk, he said we can download our personalities into robots. <laughs> I, I've seen this before. It was uh, the second Avengers, um, Age of Ultron, and um, Ultron is what happened. I so yeah, about, I, I was about to be like, you know what? That might be cool to try out as like a have a partner that like actually likes your humor and gets shit that you get and shit like that might be cool. But then I thought about it like, I think they're gonna get angry like me too. And even if they don't program them to fight, I think they'll get mad at me and decide to steal off on my ass, man. That's a big ass metal hand coming at me. I don't know that I want. I don't know that I want an angry me that I had to fight me. Well, exactly. Elon said that they're um, they're docile robots. Like you can run away from them real quick. Yeah, that's what they, they said. Not robot. Yeah, that's what they said. I'm just saying what Elon said. What he thinks of them. They had, they had three laws and a robot. Them shit violated them shits. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anybody think yep. Elon might be a robot? I kind of think Elon might be uh, what we call a phalanx, which is an alien robot species that is all AI driven, like the Borg from Star Trek, uh-huh. or whatever. Living, living hive mind of a computer, and he's just the agent that's down here. I think he's an android. Yeah, yeah I, same human. thing. Now, who runs him? That's the question. Who's like who's operating? Who's behind him? That's the question. But I think he's an android. The the alien AI race that um that wants to assimilate all living things into its computer system. That's and that's too right. At the very least, he George the Bush and wear, and wear people skins from mid and black. At the very least, Bush George Bush controlling Elon Musk. See, does Elon see, eat a lot of thing. sugar for no reason? I don't know. Well, his all his kids are like math equations for names, like X X two three something. So, oh, hey, yeah. he just yeah. started naming his kids like robot. See, him and mm-hmm. Sophia got a thing. That's Sophia, baby yeah. daddy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I kind of scared of that now. If Elon is actually a human or whatever. See, these are the things about conspiracy theories that that always made me think that nah, this this is not believable. They're made by humans, and they rely on humans actually to be smart and crafty enough to have some type of organized system. That's real. Where they, this makes sense, and throughout um, throughout my years of learning history anthropology uh the same thing seems to pop up uh humans are not that organized we have too many egos to actually bond together to have a systematic system where a conspiracy theory would make sense here yeah so I feel like that's why somebody, I... somebody will fuck up and leak it yeah somebody along that chain will fuck up 
Oh, no, no, man. We played first 48. We're not that reliable. No, not at all. Not especially when our life are, is at stake. And I don't care what your street friends and all your real nigga friends is going to say. <clears throat> you don't know what you'll do when you, until you're in that situation. As the great philosopher Mike Tyson has said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face or right slapped now. in the face. <clears throat> or what they do on First 48 seems to be they offer them a, a, a meal from whatever the closest fast food joint is. Nigga gets surprised with a burger up there, the nigga tell everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. man, you, I like Jack in the Box. You got, you got me some barbecue sauce too. Oh man, I tell you, man, it was up on 36th Street. Last night, it was Jim Bob and Ray Ray. I tell you, they both was over there. And they had all this shit. They gonna be over there tonight on 930. Not Ray Ray. 935 if you want to catch a right on time. Not Ray Ray, man. He a good boy. He got a scholarship. Got a he was in with church this? choir. Well, hell, Pablo the one that be supplying them. Like, they gonna tell everything for, some, for a value meal. Yeah. Exactly. Like I said. Great philosopher Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And speaking of Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson stopped a potential shooting at a Hollywood comedy club. Did he knock somebody out? You know, and I was looking at the video or whatever, and it didn't necessarily look like, I, I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but, or what he was doing. Whatnot, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was, if it was Mike Tyson, he probably not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, you what? What a gun! Unless you have a certain caliber of gun, I don't know that you want to even fuck with Mike Tyson with a gun, because I unless like you either need an automatic that's gonna let off some shit real fast off a pull, or you need some heavy that's gonna hit and stop his big ass. Cause I see him eating through anything that's a nine millimeter down. Like I see him just chewing through that shit and still punching the fuck out of you before it's all over. Like you still gonna wear a big ass fist knot. You're gonna look like Bill Collector. Oh, this is the nicest way to actually, we thought it was gonna be a punch. We thought it was gonna be a punch, but it turns out that Mike Tyson is a, even a bigger man than Will Smith. Oh, wow. wow. Gave him a hug. Yeah, he gave him a hug. <laughs> he said, hey, man, come here. Come here, man. Come here. Grab the hug. Got, got the gun. I said grab the hug. And hug the man. <laughs> grab the hug. Come here. Go ahead, Mike. Yo, Mike. I mean, if that nigga tell you to come hug him, you gonna hug him. I I, I, I don't really hug nigga. I, I, damn. All right, Mike. You know he might kiss you one cheek. So yo, that nigga used to beat niggas ass and then kiss him. Like, what you gonna do yeah. with that? Like, yeah, that's a different level than nothing. Like, you just gotta kind of stay away from Mike or just be prepared to take whatever the fuck he about to throw at you. Because uh, unless you are two hundred, unless you are a high level elite heavyweight fighter, i.e., uh, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, uh, somebody like that. Maybe a Klitschko brother, um, Lennox Lewis, Buzz, like somebody like that that can like, like 6'8", 250, 60 pounds. Man, I mean, the heart. And even then, unless you elite at boxing, he gonna beat the shit mm-hmm. out of you. Yeah, even the elites get their ass beat fast. This nigga like made a living face. of doing it. And he ain't but 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, mm-hmm. But he gonna get up there. Mm-hmm. And if one of them left He's... hooks hit your ass, oh, good night, nurse. So I can imagine a nigga at a comedy club looking at him and you you are a buck eighty, a buck, a buck ninety soaking wet with with metal drawers on. And that nigga Mike Tyson you, hey, come on, give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. You know? Yes, sir. That might be the best way out of it, you know? You know? That would oh either it's either that or you you shot Mike Tyson and now you're going to jail for shooting somebody you're you can't going beat. To hell, because he's gonna knock your soul out of your body. That too. <laughs> Before anybody come pick anything up, before he's in a cuff, before you in a gurney, you're getting beat the fuck. Yo, yo, think about what this nigga does in a ring where he's trained to when he hears ding, ding, 
walk the fuck off. Now imagine what he gonna do after he knock you the fuck out if you done made him put him into a rage where he gotta go back to that place and now he just keeps hitting you. What's that nigga he hit in the mouth and destroyed it in the 80s? Mitch Green. Yeah. I just said, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Yo, well, um, uh, who was the guy he was fighting when he first came back in boxing? Like a couple uh, of years back. Peter McNeil. No, you talking about as an old man? As an old man and these oh, oh, like no. the past previous um Roy Joe. I know the first time Roy he Jones. came back. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Roy Joe. All right. So mind you, he said he hasn't been boxing for like 20, 30 years. Ooh. Like not 20, but 20, 15, 20 that? years. Tyson. No, nah, he said maybe 10. Because I know he was still boxing as of like 2011, 2012, I feel like. I saw, not I not saw, on a regular uh, basis, but he was still like fighting. Mm-hmm. But he said know. as in the video, I seen him in the video when they were talking about um, Roy Jones or whatever. Is he going to be safe or whatever? And Tyson was like, man, I ain't been in the ring 15, 15, 20 years. This man been in the ring for the past five years. You should be worried about me or whatever. No, <laughs> Oh no, it might be about 17 years. Mm-hmm. Last one when he got beat up by uh Kevin McBride. Now mind you, mind you, it's been 15 years. Knocked the fuck years, out. And Roy Jones was still breathing hard. <laughs> oh yeah, you're yeah. not gonna take no Tyson body shot. You're not gonna get hit by Tyson and not no. know you got no. hit. And plus he now he might have old man strength on top of the strength that he already has. Bro, the average person walking the street, okay, what you take at your local gym, Tyson will knock the right. shit out you. Because you're you going to land 30. He going to land a quick one. Like, people forget how fast that nigga is. Like, he's not a big, slow nigga. He's a big, fast nigga. Mm-hmm. And he Momentum. built like a cannonball. So it's like all you hips. Juggernaut, bitch. That you nigga, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He got one of them type punches. Like, that's Colossus punching the shit out. Like, you you feel them. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, your grandkids feel them. Like, that nigga hit you in the... That nigga will hit you in, the, in, your, in your, your body and have you out there looking like uh, De La Hoya. Oh, my liver! He hit me in the liver! Oh, God, he hit me in the liver! It was the liver! <laughs> liver. Yeah, that strongest man on earth, Mike Tyson. <laughs> my freaking Tyson. But um, yeah, even him, he's turned the other cheek. Pause. I like that. Whatever. They but um, yeah, the they said, he said that the drunk dude or whatever, I think he was heckling the, the comedian and then he challenged Tyson to the fight. Tyson kind of like engaged a little bit just to calm him down whatever then he got some distance then he pulled out a gun on the host and and Tyson was like come on man come on bring it in bring he it just in wanted some attention and some love probably mm-hmm. he snap yeah and um these yeah. snapping at these comedy shows uh can't take jokes man don't go to comedy shows I mean that shit like this definitely don't go to comedy shows with a date don't go to comedy shows if you got mental health issues. Like something may be said that triggers you. It's a comedy mm-hmm. show. Comedians are paid to literally find the humor in all in all, every random everyday situation. <laughs> and I'm not gonna get constantly oppressed by sensitive people. Um, my comedy and my entertainment mm-hmm. oppressed by sensitive people because. Y'all have a problem or whatever. People talk Big shit facts. about me all the time. I have lived a whole glorious life of people just talking shit and joking on me. I don't give a goddamn. I really don't give a goddamn. You know why I don't give a goddamn? Oh, I'm a single ladies. Oh, I'm a single ladies. You, you hear that, people? Fuck that dude. Say that. But that's my brother, man. <laughs> I don't care. Still, fuck him, because he kept singing that shit. That's my <laughs> sister, them shit. You see me? I'm carrying on with my day. Night. 
Yeah, because it's 12. Mm-hmm. And being that it's 12 and past 12, let me carry on with the good and fuckers so we can get this the fuck on. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know what that was for. Uh, Mike Tyson. Um, so uh, something else cleared up. Uh, if y'all speaking of disses and disrespect and whatnot, if y'all have not known, Pusha T had put out a diss against Arby's. It was the most- Arby's? Yes. I mean, not, yeah. Arby's. He, not against yeah. Arby's. For Arby's, against McDonald's, pretty much. McDonald's. He dissed McDonald's for Arby's. Because, you know, he he's the one that wrote for McDonald's. Man, I'm, I'm loving it. So these I'm niggas are now having, like, a rap beef? These, these, Ex- these It's not these, really a- it's, right it's not good seriously. Ass fast food restaurants is having a damn rap beat it's, over who what who gonna give you diarrhea quicker? Fish, fish it's a fish sandwich. Personally, I think it was on Pusha T's behalf. It's it's a bit of genius because all right, you got past the point where you're not gonna get any more check from it, so I might as well dish you um, if somebody else supplies a check for me or whatever. And the disc yeah, he said McDonald's he don't even get paid off of that shit. Yeah, so he signed on that deal. So he said, "Fuck it, I might as well just go join on in with Arby's campaign," and they let him do it. And to be honest with you, it's not corny, so I will allow it. Like All right. the commercial and the rhyme, it's not corny. He pulled it off. <laughs> okay, then. Or whatever. Okay. He pulled it off. I like. I actually, the beat was actually a dope beat. To hear Pusha T on, it sounded like something you would hear Pusha T on. He actually put in a slight coke line in it. <laughs> Talking about fish kale, and it's a fish sandwich and whatnot. It, oh. it was very Pusha T-ish. He or whatever. Yeah, he did it. He he. I'll give it to him. I, I wasn't the first person on the Pusha T bandwagon or whatever. And whatnot, but over the years, his pen, his, his pen has gone up tremendously. Mm, bitch. Mm, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. His, his, his pen is up there now. But um, I brought that up because that also brings up a line because he actually uh, referenced a Jay-Z line that has been uh, a a subject of talk in barbershops everywhere. I'm a hustler, baby. I can sell water to a whale. Now, are we talking about a whale that you get water from? Or are we talking about the animal whale? Or whatever. It's been, it's one of those uh, conversations that people have like went back and forth against all the time, pretty much. And uh, I know I remember um, McCory, Mc, McCory and me were going back and forth at it because I was thinking water, I was thinking actually water from both. I was actually thinking it's both as a double entendre or whatever. You can get water from an actual well. I'm not sure which one he was saying, but I think he was talking about the bucket well because you can actually get water from it or whatever, but me, I always thought it was both. I always thought it was whale, well, like animal to whale. Well. Yeah, I always thought it was both, and I, you know, I it was double entendre because you call a person that has a big bankroll a whale. Well. Mm-hmm. But bringing that up, um, somebody on Twitter brought it up. It was like, all right, somebody gives me an answer, and just Blaze answered her by showing a, a text from Jay-Z himself. And he said he always liked to play with it. So with it being a double entendre, basically it's both. Hmm. He's, he's saying both. It was, he left it up for the listener to, to determine, basically. Well, sure. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Which I, which I figured he was doing anyway or whatnot. Um, I'm trying to find a tweet or whatever. He uh he wrote well W E L L slash W H A L E as the the answer and it said it's never a coincidence when these things happen. 
I try to make things work on multiple levels every time I sit down to create. It keeps me engaged. So both. It checks out with uh, Jay Z's writing style too. Mm -hmm. He's good for giving you like the surface level, then the one that you catch Nate, and then the one that's like, oh shit, I didn't realize he was there with it. Okay. No, nope, yeah. Next, next on the list, um, uh, is it Malaya Obama? Malia. That's how you say her name. Oh, Malia. Malia. Would Malia? you call her okay. Melania? Malia. Trump, that's the Trump lady. <laughs> not Melania. Malia. Oh, I was like, no, that's that white lady. Malia. <laughs> <laughs> so Malia. Obama is a writer on Donald Glover's new show. Basically, her and Childish Gambino is working on a new show coming up. I didn't yeah. know she was a writer. Okay. Shout out to her. She and graduated no. college or did she just drop out and say, fuck I, it, I'm going for this? I think it, I don't think she dropped out of college. She either graduated or she's still in it and it's just doing this off to the side. Salute to you, Malia. Hmm. We get the Yeah, that's pretty big. That's pretty big shit. Um, Buckery has came up um, with Bobby Schmurter as he's been released from Epic Records. Yeah, they tied in ass twerking. They're like, you yeah, know, you don't you set your fruit booty ass down somewhere. This is completely the opposite of the image we were thinking we were going to get. Yeah, well, we got nobody, you out of jail. Ain't nobody bail you off of no Chiquita banana, man. Put your ass down mm -hmm. over that weird shit. All that gyrating, gyrating and postulating. Yeah, and we we know you we know you you West Indian in some ways and this man. that and the third, but yeah, there ain't no excuse for me. That wasn't what you were doing before. No, but to play. So um WWE has announced that they're going to honor um, Shad Gaspar. Uh, he was um, JT and one of that short-lived um, tag team called Crime Time. Mm. The goofy okay. dude okay. with the okay. cornrows and they had the GU in the best in the front, but he was the mm. actual muscle of the group. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. But um, he, he tragically passed um, at age 39, Venice Beach, you know, like in 2020. Yeah, I remember that. Whatever. Or whatever. And um, they're going to honor him in the next WrestleMania um, Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Uh, the 2020 20, 20, Warrior Award. Really good. They were really good in Clayton Thomas' uh, Team CT sketch. Mm hmm. The twenty, he's getting the twenty twenty two Warrior Award. Um, man. Well, he's getting another uh, racist award. So, um, and speaking of wrestling, Triple Triple H announced that he's retired with Stephen A. Smith. Basically, when they uh, always retire. Ain't he been retired? Mm, since he not really, because every once in a while he would end up doing some type of match or whatever. He right. was still doing business stuff, but you you would still it still was a possibility that you might see Triple H in a match in WrestleMania or Triple H in some type of storyline uh, or whatever. But now he's been more on the scenes. But he uh, he explained that like in September he had um, like a uh, scare like a cardiac scare or whatever like he was mm -hmm. he said he he was real close um to just dying in in general like he oh, sure. he um i believe what he say because i was um i was looking at it earlier or whatever but they said they found some type of um i think it was like pneumonia or something like that but it was something awkward about it or, or whatever and he said that if he they basically told him pack his bags and go straight to uh an emergency room 
right then and there. He didn't have, at that time, he didn't have mm-hmm. nothing. He didn't feel anything wrong with them. But as soon as they got those test results, they told him, hey, go straight to the, the ER. And then from there, he said with his condition, he's not going to be able to, like, wrestle for real. Well, yeah. But, uh, so, Thanks. yeah, because he said right now he got, like, um, he got, like, a, is it a pacemaker or something? Um, but he got a defibrillator or something like that right in his body right now. A piece of machine can't be wrestling something, hit it, and the next thing you know, no nah, hell no, nah. nigga hit that nigga, get a splash on him, and that be <clears throat> it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Uh, with Triple H, pretty much. When I was, uh, I was thinking maybe it would probably end up getting like one more Rock versus Triple H or or, or something, but Bring yeah, I don't think that's happening. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. But Stone Cold yeah, will be fighting Kevin Owens this WrestleMania this weekend. Oh shit! It's I like gonna that, be man. on. I feel like it's a lot, a little bit overdue though. Yeah, because he's been using that stunner for a while, the Kevin Owens. Yeah. Or whatever, and it's a sloppy. It's it's not as smooth. I have yet to see him do it, and it looks smooth. I will say it looked a lot better than John Cena's stunner that I've seen him done before. That that was sloppy, but everything he do kind of sloppy to me. <laughs> but yeah, he should not stand <clears throat> by. Him. Yeah, but um, yeah, but that's pretty much the fuckery. The only other fuckery is Big Sean. Straighten his hair, and now he looked like, and he looked like Chance, the first Chance from, um, I'm in love with New York or whatever that VH1 show was, whatever the first Chance, the rapper and the other guy with the oh, perm, brother. Yeah. He looked, he looked like him. <laughs> Real Chance, uh, look, Big Shine out here looking like DJ Quick. Oh, <laughs> pretty much. Oh shit. Battle cat. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, if y'all haven't seen the Batman movie, I don't say I don't advise you to go ahead and see the scene because it, it really does, wouldn't make that much of a difference for you. For mm-hmm. you, but if you have, there's a there's a deleted there's a five minute deleted scene with the Joker in it. Mm-hmm. And okay. yeah, they man, the Joker look. Batman must have fucked him up before he came into the asylum man because he looked deformed like that is the ugliest looking joker like it looked like he got like beat with a pan or something across Damn. his face <laughs> and lips <laughs> or something like beat with a pan. He, he looked like batman just beat the shit out of him before they said it oh. but Damn. it it was a it was a cool little scene i can see why Shout they out to took pan, it dude. out of the movie yeah, mm-hmm. Hell no. skillet. I can see why they like precious mother. Mm. That nigga got <laughs> hit with a goddamn oppressor cookie out this beast in the face. But mm. anyway, um, I see why they took it out because it kind of don't fit the overall theme of the movie. It will probably take away from the Riddler it, itself. But to tell you the truth, but I would. I could have seen it as like a as a post credit scene. Like the, instead of the post credit scene that they had, they could have used this as a post credit scene or whatever. Even though the the movie was over with, people would have stayed for the Joker to see what the Joker looked like. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the fuckery for this week. Well, with the end of the fuckery comes the beginning of a goodie, but oldie. I'm going to bring back this week a uh, top five thing that pissed me off. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, so first thing that pisses me off is ashy ass elbows, feet, and ankles. Starting to get warm outside and they're already out. Motherfuckers had enough time to invest in lotion while it was cold. Just because it's warm doesn't mean show skin and be ashy. Please respect yourself enough not to be ashy in public. In your own home, don't be ashy. 
You feel me? In your own home, that's one thing. But you come out, either cover that shit up or put some lotion on it. <laughs> Please. Now, and white people get ashy you too. Put some lotion on it. White people get what? ashy too. Exactly. Yes. Okay, what can Ash is ash. Put some shit on. Put some lotion on. And make sure when you get lotion, it's oil based and not water based. Water based lotion, it just smears everywhere. It really doesn't give you any protection. It really doesn't give you any moisture. Get oil based lotions or creams. They're good for your skin and it's good for that ash. Let's move on. Second thing that pisses me off is know it all ass kids. And I'm not just talking about little kids, I'm talking about big kids, grown kids too. Just because you're 20 don't mean you're grown because your ass still stupid to some shit you ain't learned yet. Especially if you're human. Damn right. Know it all ass kids. Sometimes it's good just to shut the fuck up and listen. I I I would probably want the Randy Orton punk kick. Little I, smart mouth motherfucker. I can guarantee this is just probably because I'm getting older and I'm saying this shit, but damn it, fuck it anyway. Kids, shut the fuck up. You don't know everything. Listen and pay attention. You might learn some shit so you ain't got to bust your ass to learn every goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. Next mm-hmm. thing. Next thing that pisses me off how the masses of people are so easily fooled by buffoonery and gimmicks in the media. There's other other shit going on that's more important than the bullshit that continues to be spread about, talked about, focused on. Can we get back to focusing on real topics so we can get back to getting some real change going? We still ain't got shit. Just because y'all gave us somebody on a fucking quarter don't mean no shit has changed. We still need the systemic change we've been looking for for these past couple of years, but motherfuckers keep letting they put up because they put bullshit out in the media to distract you. Please focus your attention on the shit at hand, and not the bullshit. And I still yeah. haven't seen that quarter yet. I don't want to see that shit. Not Angelou with the Randy Orton. <laughs> Moving on. The next thing that pisses me the fuck off is this so-called label of being an angry black man anytime you show your emotions of anger. No, I'm not an angry, so-called angry black man. I'm just a black man who happens to be angry at the fucking moment. Give me my credit. Give me my space. Give me my respect to be in whatever emotion I choose to display. If I'm pissed the fuck off, Shit, fuck it. I'm pissed the fuck off. You don't say, oh, that's just a normal angry white man when you say Caucasian getting white. No, you just say that man angry. Give me the same shit. I may be Unless, black. I may be angry, but I ain't an angry black man. I'm just a black man who happens to be angry at that fucking moment. That's really- Unless you're me, because I be saying they angry white men all the time. <laughs> angry old white men. I, I, I might be the only person on earth that's doing it. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we should start a movement of people saying angry white but black uh, angry white man. I, see, that's how I ingrained it. I accidentally said angry black man. See, you program. This program, man. I'm Get me out the matrix. Television, because see, they be telling lies to your vision. You the, last thing, the last thing that really pisses me off is the media's obsession with people's personal lives and their personal relationships. You feel me? And with the media getting intertwined, the regular people, the regular everyday people get intertwined in this bullshit and get so intertwined in what's going on in these so-called celebrity personal relationship lives that they can't, they, they spend more time looking at their lives than their own fucking lives. They can't figure out what's going on in their own fucking relationship. Mm-hmm. If they spend more time focusing on home and stop focusing on the fucking TV, what's going on on Tom, Dick, and Harris show, Motherfucker, maybe your own household will be running better. But God dang. Yeah, that's real. Where is that shit at? You feel me? Like, I, I get really sick and tired of, I, I, I have to be on social media now doing it because of the stuff we do. You feel me? So I get really fucking tired of seeing people talk about, you know what happened, Brad Pitt, you know what happened, Will Smith, you know what happened. No, I don't know what happened. I really don't give a fuck because at the end of the day, them niggas will fuck about my relationship. 
these well, niggas is fam- these fam- these niggas is famous because of the type of job they have. If Will Smith was a mailman, wouldn't nobody give a fuck about what Will Smith was fucking doing? Yeah, because I don't give a fuck about my mailman that come up here. I'm joking. <laughs> you oh, feel me? My mail, my mailman, my mailwoman. Exactly. Mail Better hurry I, up and have it on time. Be kind of late lately. Right. You feel me? You feel me? That's my thing. If I'm just because of their job, there's a fascination with what goes up. No, nah, man. Give these people the respect that you would give a motherfucker serving you a sandwich and motherfucker subway. Let that nigga do their job and go the fuck up. Period. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I listen to some of the speeches and shit. Will Smith said, but we're in a profession where we have to take people's business. You don't have to take that shit. But at the end of the day, the people who are giving you all that negative attention and shit like that, they the same people who paying to see your shit like the other people who paying to see your shit saying about the positive shit. So take this shit with a grain of salt. Ignore that motherfucking shit. But people pay more attention to at home than you pay attention to what's going on in somebody else's home that you don't know that you'll never meet that got way more money than you. Please. They need that. The priority should be home. I understand it may be entertaining at times to talk about this and gossip about this, but goddamn, when you do more gossiping about a celebrity than you doing getting your communication at home right, some got to be wrong somewhere. Yeah. And that's all the thing that pissed me off this week. I thought I'd just bring to the table and shake because you come in there with this bubbling inside. I just wanted to spew them to the public. Well, I enjoyed this view. I, I think they're all very poignant and things that uh, might not piss people at home off necessarily, but definitely things to think about. Um, but I definitely agree with some of them. I'm going to let y'all know, I'm going to keep dropping these memes and stuff that I find funny about this situation. So yeah. even though I say you leave well alone, I'm still dropping them memes, man. <laughs> Get your jokes off, Pat. Yeah, Drop that's what shit. celebrities are for. They signed up for that. Yeah, now, let me say one thing. Telling people your business. Let me say one thing. thing. Now, sidetrack, I just want to give a big shout out. It's a female artist that I've been trying to pay more attention to her lyrics and just her her whole movement. Um, She came out of Patty LaBelle? No, everybody know about Patty. But the sad track. Um, her name is Tierra <laughs> Wack. I forgot where she's from. She a rapper and shit. Yeah. But, oh, I fuss for her. I fuss with Tierra Wack. Yeah. Tierra Wack, she like dope. she, she dope as a bitch. Like she doing her motherfucking thing. She come with some good lyrics. She's like abstract. I fuck with it. I fuck with her concepts and shit though. Yeah. Yeah, she's very Missy S to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, I pick up them vibes too. Yeah. But a lot lyrical. Really yeah. lyrical. She got yeah. a lot of lines. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A bar heavy move. <laughs> the performance and creative like abilities of a missing, but mm-hmm. definitely. Like, she got movie. that. Um, yeah, she kind of like got that Missy Buster Rhymes esque. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she ain't she ain't one of overly flung her body type female, so she ain't getting the, the life she deserves. You know, like, yeah. Like she, yeah. She, like she, Rhapsody. Exactly. Like yeah. Rhapsody fires for two years. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'd still be looking at them twerking ass girls, but whatnot. But uh, <laughs> I really don't. Say, I really don't expect them to be lyrical because of the music that they make is lyrical, but right, I will give it to them. I will give it to them. They are like Megan. I do hear her say lines, they might be the same type of songs, but she got lines in it. No, I don't don't even listen to her music. Like when I when I hear her come on, I turn the song instantly because I I just really don't like I don't like her music. I don't know what it is about it. I couldn't really articulate why I don't like it, but it is something it's about ratchet. Her music. Like, no, no, no. Because I love ratchet. You do like ratchet music. Yeah. Yes, I do. I, I love it. Well, it's not, not your particular taste in ratchet. Exactly. 
but it, it, it's, mm. it's just not there. I don't know what it is about. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, she's a talented young lady. She She's making her money. And I mean, she has fans who dig her music, but I'm just not one of those people who would partake in her style of music. Like, I hear it and I turn it. Well, no, no, no. Chicken sandwich, who I hang out with, she she listen to nothing but that goddamn <laughs> ass music. And I listen to all of them. I hear every every freaking female rapper there is. I hear you just you don't listen to them because they female. No, I listen to female rappers. I just don't listen to the female rappers you listen to because they ratchet. <laughs> they and ratchet. I don't care about that stuff. And everything that they say it goes against me. Period. Don't love that nigga. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not listening though. Like, I love it though, because then I love it though, because when <laughs> she tries to like say in defense the rappers that I talk about that I listen to on a normal basis or whatever, and then I go back, well, you think they rap about the same thing too? They just women. <laughs> 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 whatever then she can't defend it because it's, it's true it's like they rap it really good sometimes it is it, depending on your opinion right you know it, they not making that music for me so why would i listen to it how sus how suspect would that be to see some nigga Riding around, listening to Megan, <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion, and her ratchet ass songs about <laughs> oh, you riding around, with turning the niggas in the sense. Yeah, riding around like city girls in your car with the windows down. Like who the fuck is? Yeah, man. What the fuck? No, no, no. I just appreciate the. Nigga, listen to a song where he said he. What the song says, I pop my pussy or some shit like that. Like they, they be having the most. N- nothing about that song is universal. Like you cannot play that song. That the only people that song was designed for was people in the club and women. <laughs> Whatever. <Yeah. laughs> it was. It was not designed to be universal. And strippers. <laughs> Strippers, people in club, and women. That's the only, only like demograph that music is designed for. All this is people outside of that that spectrum or whatever. We're gonna look weird as fuck. You <laughs> weird as fuck pumping that shit. I mean, to each his own. Listen to whatever you like. But, whatever, but, but I'm weird. Going to also weird. <laughs> There is no normal, but weird is weird. Yeah, exactly. Peep that. To peep what is that? The, there is no more, normal. Everything is weird. It's more, it's more examples of weird than it is normal because nobody know what normal is because humans are flawed anyway. So how can you have a normal? A normal, excuse me. If every human is said to be unique, what is normal about anybody? Right. Boom. The only thing normal are the basic <laughs> things with born with hair. You know we all have you mean we're all born with hair. I mean, I, but then again, blood. some people some people aren't born with those things. So those things aren't normal. So at the end of the day, is it the rule of averages? Uh, if most people have this, okay, then that's normal. But if what if the most people have this shit, that's just a lot of motherfuckers that's just weird altogether. <laughs> and that's the people with without the shit, it's the normal. Well, really, I'm the only normal human in the world. The rest of y'all are just fucked up. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with y'all. Okay. And that in turn is fucking me up um, and making me feel like I got something wrong with me. Normal is normal. And I tell you what make you be normal. Not getting your motherfucking partners or AC eighty three gear before this motherfucking spring season gets into the full effect. Now what the Damn fuck is you waiting on? Face, tell them how to get that shit. 
Man, once again, I tell y'all motherfuckers every week, you can go to rtreclothing.com. Once again, that's rtreclothing.com. A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. I refuse to ever spell clothing for mm-hmm. you. It's A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Don't forget to use your promo code PODSQUAD83. Make sure you use all caps. Once again, Get listen. Up. Put the caps lock on. Type in PODSQUAD83 at the very bottom where it says apply promo code. Say some money, man. The only place ever to get any AC83 merchandise or exclusive partners podcast merchandise, man. If you want a comfort pillow, you want a throw pillow, you want a body pillow, we got that. You want a beach towel, it's almost beach season, we got that. You need a case for your iPhone, we got that. You need a hoodie for your back and your head, we got that. You need a short sleeve shirt, you need some joggers. We got that too. We got it. Check it out, man. Indeed, man. And after you save some money using that promo code, that's all caps, Pod Squad A3. Use that little bit of money that you just saved and then come on over and spend it and become a monthly supporter at buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. Or you can become a monthly supporter at anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners for $4.99 per month. If you do it on buymeacoffee.com, though, not only will you be supporting us, but you also get access to exclusive membership perks such as unedited footage, um, the ability to actually influence topics that we speak on, our Discord server, which gives you exclusive access to behind the scenes to us, and much, much more. So please make sure that you go to one of those and go ahead and consider becoming a monthly supporter. Or you can just donate if you'd like to help the pod and continue to see us grow and flourish by donating at Cash App, dollar sign, partner tis one, that's dollar sign, P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z-1, or at buymeacoffee.com, you can donate for as little as $1. And once you've done looking us up, you know, spending your money to support us and, and, you know, keep the pod growing and keep the conversation going. And how can they do that, Pat? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-E-S. Uh, also on Facebook with Tiz Face Pat, all the partners. You can find us there. Uh, feel free to comment. Um, feel free to tell me I'm fucked up for putting these crazy ass memes about Will Smith up there. Because <laughs> I have plenty of them since that night. I woke up into the slap and saw nothing but memes. And I was like, I have to get this for my pod squad and my people so they can flourish with these <laughs> in general. So hit us up there um, at T H E P O D N A S. And that's Tiz Face Pat, all the partners on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok. And this one. Yeah. Yeah. I think, that's, I think those are the major ones. But yeah, on everything <laughs> at the partners except for Facebook, where you can type in the partners, but it's at Tiz Face Pat. And make sure that after you've done all that and you support us, man, you go ahead and leave us a voice message. Uh, you can do that on Spotify and Anchor, and it allows your voice to actually become a part of the uh, podcast. Um, your take is actually put into our podcast. So let us hear you sound off with your takes. Um, agree with what I said, disagree with what I said, thought Face had a good point in the segment. Thought Pat was saying something that you were like, oh, that really resonated with me. Well, let us hear about it. Make sure you leave us a voice message on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. Or if you're listening to us on Spotify, you can do it there as well. Now, that pretty much brings us to the end of this week's show. This is episode 71. Uh, Smack, 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 smack. Pete Gladden. If you don't know who you are, and I don't know. So you can meet me in room this, this, this boat. Yep. Uh, but uh, if you know, you know on that one, that's a throwback of oldie but goodie. But man, we about to get about this thing, man. And I've been one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, and I've been along with the other third of the partners. It's the slap slap of the wine. I mean, Padawan. 
<laughs> laughing at people that get slapped and laughing at people that's doing the slapping. And I'm alone with. <laughs> What's happening, man? It's the final piece. It's face. And we about this place, man. Y'all enjoy. Big bats, bitches. We about this motherfucker. Love y'all. Have a great week.